Welcome back to Creative Live, your home for all things creativity. And we are so excited today to have a new classic with Audrey Mould. Uh, I am your host today, Kate Dessa, and I'm so excited to introduce Audrey back to the show. And today it is a live class kickoff for her new class, How to Create Beautiful Portraits by Simplifying Light. So welcome back to create Audrey how are you today I'm good how are you thanks for having me yeah of course we're so excited. photographers podcast episode a few months back and we got so excited about her work that we asked her to come back and and so we're so excited to be launching her brand new class it is premiering today um if you click the link that is in the caption you can do on creativelive.com um this is just as a reminder this is the live kickoff so we are just chatting a little bit about the class before it's at 9 30 sharp so after this live kickoff make sure you head over to creativelive.com and watch the live class it is streaming for four hours only so um audrey tell us a little bit about where you're where you're uh where are you filmed and are right now as everyone tell us where you guys are, are joining us from audrey i think that the class was shot in chicago and that's where you are yep so the class was um filmed in downtown chicago which is where i do 99 percent of my work so i try to give you know throughout the class show um being in the heart of downtown chicago and then i kind of took Take it out a little further out by the water and um, the harbor. And there's like this little hidden forest where it, it looks like, I mean, it's really, it's a forest, but it's like small and enclosed. It's actually called a bird sanctuary. So I tried to do, um, put everything in like one class of what I could take maybe five or six clients to. So definitely downtown heart of Chicago. And then down on the lakefront and playing over there as well. So yeah, and that's where I, I mean, I'm, I'm in Chicago too, by the way. Very nice. So tell us if, if anyone tuning in is is home, is Chicago as well, and if not tuning in from, I'm here in Las Vegas. I'm originally from the Chicago area. I grew up in Illinois and went to school at Loyola. So. This class was really to watch because I got to see all these places that uh, I used to be my stomping grounds. So um, to make, make sure you're tuning talk a little bit about the class. Audrey, why, why did you decide to make this class in the first place? What was exciting about it? You know, um, some of the things that I do, I think is pretty unconventional. Whereas I try to look at the light of, in my surroundings versus like what's pretty first. I always say light first, location second. So I think that what people really could glean from this is how to like really just look at the light regardless of what's going on. And if you kind of just like look around, you'll have a different understanding about how to create different portraits without having everything just so pretty and perfect. And when you do things like that, you also can find like little, I guess, kind of like the old charm of things because we, you know, as photographers, we're visual and we want things to look a certain way through our eyes. But if we take it a step back and then look at the light first and think about what you can create within that light, you can do it anywhere, regardless of the location. So like within the class, 
the locations don't look good. <laughs> like they really like, I mean, some do, I mean, obviously green trees and water, but when you get into the city, I mean, it's, it does not look good, but the magic you can create there is fantastic. So that's kind of what I want people to kind of glean from it. Like you don't have to have. Yeah. That that's it. So. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest takeaway I had from the, the class was you know you take these kind of dark uh kind of dirty looking settings and you really create these beautiful shots that um, and you say it in the class your clients rarely think that the shots are ever going to turn out into these beautiful shots and they're so shocked at results because you're able to play with so much of the urban light that's going on and um you know create this into this beautiful scene and it's such a cool transformation yep yep and that's exactly it and it's not just so you know not only what's you know what the location look lo looks like but the things that are within the location like you know in one of the segments like using the headlights from cars that are like parked that you know just little things like that that you can create like beautiful rim light that would take a second light for me to create just really being, you know, paying attention to your surroundings, I think really not only kind of takes the pressure off of the photographer, do you know what I'm saying? Um, but more importantly, it, it, um, it, puts, it puts the photographer back into the role of the creator, meaning that whoever you're photographing, they can't really imagine what you're gonna do because that creation is within. So if I don't put everything out there where they, you know, hey, this is a beautiful flower bed and we see this beautiful statue and they can envision it a little bit. But in my settings, no one can envision it unless I tell them. So. Totally. Look at a couple of the shots. All right. So we're, we're going to pull up a couple different shots here from the class that, are, that will give us a little insight into the means that Audrey is creating. Tell us a little bit about where this shot, you know, is taken. It looks like we have one strobe. Uh, um, yes. sorry. Um, tell us a little bit about what went into shooting this shot. So, you know, with this one, it, 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 it's really kind of, I, I walked up to this spot and it was a little doorway in a wall. Literally this is what it was. And I'm like, okay, you know, can you get up there? And she's like, sure, propped her up there. And it was just kind of, I wanted it to, to actually look like what it was, a door in a wall. And, you know, the light over there wasn't all that great, but, you know, brought in that one strobe to kind of give some, which is some of the things that I really talk about in the course, really play with those highlights and that shadow and those shadows. So it gives it more of a dramatic look. But when you walk up to it, it was crappy. I mean, at, honestly, the the real pullback of it, you know, when I walked up, it was actually pigeons and popcorn everywhere. So we kicked all of that <laughs> out of the way and took the shot. So so yeah. And it's one of my favorites. Yeah, you see it on the ground like yeah. black. And it's, here's the Yeah, yeah. So there's popcorn all by her feet. It was actually on the ground too. We just kicked it all away. <laughs> That's literally what we did. And so now tell us a little bit, you know, when was the shot taken? What, what time of day you're using up here? Um, what else, what else in terms of natural light or any other additional light were you using to capture that shot that we were just looking at? So with this image, I wanted it to look darker than it actually was. So this was captured actually around noon and it was really bright and sunny outside. So like one of my goals is not to be tied down to time of day and rather create the light, the light and look that I want. So that's what I did here. I wanted it to look a little bit more moody, but it was actually bright and sunny outside. And that's as I was watching your class that's the biggest takeaways is you're able to create these really moody really um you know 
you would expect that it's right that you're taking these shots and you're you're out in the middle of the day and I had no idea you were, you could create such mood without doing a lot of post afterwards. A lot of it is still just straight through the lighting and I would expect that you went in and did a ton of post work to create dark moody shot and you really show everyone that you can be out at noon when the sun is beaming down and still manipulate light in such a way. Um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, how what goes into your technique when you are going out and there is such middle of the day. What, what are you looking for to create these um, kind of moody shots? What are you looking for dark alleyways? What are you what's into finding um, a spot that's going to create that mood when it's the middle of the day? So the first thing I have to look at is what's around me. How does the natural light or the ambient light react on the, the, my surroundings, buildings, trees, cars, all types of things? I look at that and then I can determine, okay, this is a really good spot. I have more ambient light maybe filtering from above, but I've got buildings and things to really block off a lot of ambient lighting to give me more of an even feel to play with. And then I can bring in a strobe and I can kind of shape it the way that I want. On the flip side of that, you know, because this is what I do for a living, I don't want everything always to look so moody. I'm able to now maybe move them a couple of feet away and I can have a bright beauty, beautiful, airy looking shot. So really like looking at what's around you and how that ambient light, lighting, you know, affects those things that are in the location it's easier for me to say, hey, I've got some nice even lighting right here. I can bring in my strobe and make it look darker. You know what I mean? That, like, kind of like that. So it's my surroundings yeah. that really dictate how moody or how less moody I want an image to be. So that makes complete sense. So let's take a look at another shot, which is a totally different scene, and, and you can kind of speak to scene set or did you know did your client come and want a, a specific mood or a look that you then you know find? so this probably is going to sound like I'm a control freak and I'm like <laughs> really like not I don't at least I don't think I am but um I don't <laughs> I don't let clients dictate where I take pictures like all right Instead, I tell them things like, tell me what you like. Tell me, you know, if they don't, most of the time they don't know. So I will say, go to my Instagram, go to my website and pick out pictures that you like. And from there, it helps me determine where I take them. So with that part said here, this is actually one of my favorite spots. And we'll definitely see this in the course um, because I can create just kind of, it's like I can get three different looks here. I can go really like it's nighttime. I can, you know, like right here, I played with more ambient. It was captured at, at around that one o'clock in the afternoon. So you can really see like kind of in the background, you see the little um, light fall out, off on the street. It's bright there. And I'm using a lot of that ambient to light my um, subject, but I'm also using a strobe as well, but not as intensely because I still want it to look like daytime. You know what I mean? But I wanted that charm of this is, this is like the L tracks. And I guess the best way to describe it is a viaduct, even though we don't use that word in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's the best way to kind of describe it, but I want it to have that old Chicago, you know, charm in this picture. So this is a lot of, yeah. and that, and the car in the background is an Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it's, it's so great. You know, it reminds me, and I think what the L and the, the railroad tracks remind everybody is uh, of Batman now. And that's such a, like the Gotham City, like that dark kind of moody, the way it was shot in Chicago, that you're, you're encapsulating that mood and that, that those, uh, you know, that's such an iconic, um, that, that's what it jars in my memory. And you kind of create that same mood with 
with that scene in such a beautiful setting. Um, and then let's look at the next one that shows, uh, you know, it's a it's same scene, but a totally look. Yep, same. So I mean, here we're, we're looking at, and you can see it's a little bit lighter and you're letting more, more of that light in shot, those two shots around the same time. Yep, same time. And just like, again, playing with that ambience. So the difference between this one and the one we just saw is just position of the person that I'm photographing. With her, I've got her a little closer to the ambient. With the last one, I didn't, when she was kind of leaning on, I don't know, whatever that thing is, the, <laughs> the pillar, whatever she's Yeah. Doing. <laughs> but this is, you know, a, this is really, one of the things I mentioned in the course pretty briefly is the um, inverse square law of light and understanding the intensity or how less intense the light actually is. And so that's what I do a lot in terms of placement of my subjects in relation to, you know, the light and the shadows. So with this one, being able to let in enough light to kind of make it a little bit brighter, but also playing with my strobe and my camera settings to make sure I'm not overpowering a lot of that ambient. So, you know, one of the things that I, you know, when I teach, I tell people to, you know, have a, I mean, I guess it's kind of like e easier said than done for, for us photographers, but to have a little bit of intent, you know, envision the shot as much as you can before you take it. Because when you do that, you're able to say, okay, I'm going to set my camera this way because I want it a little brighter, or I'm going to set my camera settings this way because I want it a little darker. You know, like if you understand like what you want, then it's easier to play and get a lot of different looks with really minimal equipment. Yeah. And that's, it's so interesting you say that because I feel like so, so often the shot that we want to capture instead of you know yes we have this this vision of a shot that we want but then sometimes it just isn't gonna isn't gonna create it for us and then we have to adapt but it feels like in your class you really kind of debunk letting your environment you know dictate the shots you're gonna take away you you give us real tools to walk in and feel like I'm going to be able to capture this shot and it's really that's um as a photographer I feel like you know sometimes you feel so beholden to it and that's one of the best parts about your class is you really teach people you don't have to be beholden to your environment and you can still get that shot mm -hmm. um even the light isn't isn't working for you you know you really um set us up for really simple ways to still capture time in your head. And I the coolest part about your class. Um, so tell us a little bit, um, we're, we're gonna play a little clip where we go uh, in a bit about how to look at light and how to, how to see um, where the light is hitting and how to uh, place your model. But tell us a little bit about before we play that clip, um, you know, is there a specific time you tend to like to go out um, when you're trying to capture the, these style shots or, is it, you know, dependent on when your client is available? You know, honestly, um, this is, again, I'm going to sound like a control freak. So with that part said, <laughs> I, I really, I really set my schedule around my life and because I just, I mean, I, I, I set it, I, I really set it around my life. So in terms of the time of day, it's, it has to go, it has to do with what's going on with my kids, husband, family. And if I know, hey, I, I'm free from 12 o'clock until two o'clock, that's when I'm going to book my photo session. And then when a client calls me, I'll say, hey, I'm available Monday from 10 o'clock to two o'clock. Nope, Monday's not going to work, but Wednesday will. Okay, great. Now, when I started picking those different weird times of day, you know, quote unquote, what's good or bad in our industry, it had yeah. to do with me wanting, you know, working when my kids were in school. So that's how this entire thing really started, where I refused to really um, alter my lifestyle 
to, you know, create something. I get, I don't know. I'm, I'm now I'm getting long winded, but I, 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 I shoot, I, I photograph at this time of day because this is when I'm freer within my own real life. If that makes sense. Yeah. That was so long winded, Kate. <laughs> and that, that's all right. That's all right. It's, it was a, it was a necessary long winded. Cause I think ultimately photographer John feel like our whole life is dictated by light and environment. And it's so nice to hear a photographer like you, um, really take control of life and, and your career and the light that you use and find a way to, uh, still have a flourishing career that isn't uh, golden hour. <laughs> yeah. Cause at golden hour, I would rather be at home eating dinner <laughs> to be honest. All right. Well, we're going to show a little clip from the class. Uh, it's a, it's a short little clip that gets, uh, us, uh, and we get to look with you and it's a really cool little clip. So this is one of those hidden gems that I love here in the city. The thing is, most people will walk directly past it and they won't see the hidden charms that reside right here in this area. So there's beautiful lighting that is filtering directly down into the shadowy area that makes up that balance between ambient and the strobe that I would bring in. But I'm also able to bring in the charm of the city. Now here's the thing, to show you something that I love to have within my background that aids into the entire look. So stay tuned. So I wanted to begin this segment off with Audrey Tam. I want you guys to see exactly what I see. The key takeaways for this segment is the ambient lighting, the location, and how they work together. Now there are a multitude of reasons why I love this particular spot and I try my best to mention all of them to you. Because once I bring in the strobe guys, it's going to be the exact same thing as we did previously during this course. Now there is enough ambient lighting that is located in this area and I can get some pretty decent shots using just my camera and no portable reflectors at all. But that light that's located at camera left is so important to me. So now let's talk about that. Like, why is it? Well, you know, you'll look at this and you're, you're like, okay, like why? <laughs> so I really wanna like point this out and just kind of let you know kind of how I see things and hopefully it will all make sense. Now, do you see how that sun is beaming down on that building that's located at camera left? Well, it's a white or light colored building. It acts as a beautiful reflector. Remember, white reflects light. Now it's shining directly onto that very spot that I'm usually in, into that shadow area. Remember, black subtracts light. So those two things coming together creates magic. Now remember, small details, big impact. I will also come over here when it's later in the day and those street lamps come on and they're yellowish and then they'll shine on the viaduct which is also kind of yellow in color and it'll create like a really cool gold tone at top camera left. Now let's go back. What's at camera right? We've talked about camera left so much but you've got great ambient lighting that's over here but it's not as intense. That goes back to that inverse square law of light. So I'm located over here, so it's not as intense. Now this is what's behind me. It's, you know, nice ambient lighting that will expose for the face. But more importantly, it's like I said, it just doesn't look like a great location to my clients. So they are usually wondering like, why do I want to be on the side of a car? Like, what's the point? This doesn't look pretty. And I want them to think that. Because when they actually see the images, then they're thinking they think they're magical because they couldn't envision that shot. Not to mention, this is like a little bit of a um, like a little hub for Uber drivers or, um, you know, like the DoorDash. So they tend to park and wait there. So when they have their daytime running lamps, when they pop on because they're under the train tracks, it creates really, really cool rim light that shines onto the subjects that I'm photographing. So small details, big impact again and again and again with this location. 
So there's a little clip from Audrey's new class, how to create beautiful portraits with simplified light. And just as a reminder, you all are watching the live kickoff before right into the premiere of the class, which starts at 930 sharp. So if you are watching on social media, make sure you tap the link in the description and over to watch the class right at 9 30. Um, if you are watching on the class page make sure you refresh refresh the page at 9 30 and uh, it will start right at 9 30 sharp so audrey let's talk a little bit before we sign off and let people to go watch the class um i love in the show you really don't let things like Ubers and DoorDash delivery drivers affect your setting. You actually use them. And I love that part of the environment that you create. So tell me a little bit about how you got to a place where your personal style wasn't dictated by all these distractions that people often get um, sidelined by. Um, one thing I always tell people that I had to learn really, really fast was that there are a lot of things that I enjoy and love. Lots of images I love, like on Instagram, I know that I love them, but I figured out that I was not meant to create them. And I had to think about what can I consistently do all the time? And my style kind of came from me being able to consistently do what my life was about. My life was just, you know, I have four boys, my younger three, when I was, you know, starting with their, with all of your part. So my life has always been about chaos and having to make things <laughs> within chaos. So I, I embrace that and I, I don't have time to bring in a ton of equipment or a ton of stuff. So I had to like, this is where you have to shoot. How will you make it work? And I had to adopt that. Here's the best lighting. And I had to have the confidence to tell my clients, this is where we're going to shoot. And from there, it was history by really embracing just who I was unapologetically. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I what I love about you, Audrey, is you are creating the life you want and the career you want um, by, you know, not allowing a lot of the things that we feel as creative under our creativity or using those to kind of fuel your creativity um, and really develop the style that to you, but also to your lifestyle. Um, and I think this class really kind of highlights that, that the fact that, um, you know, at golden hour or sunrise um, in order to get these beautiful shots and through, you know, this new class uh, is making beautiful portraits uh, with simplified light and you know you go out with one strobe in your camera and you're creating these beautiful moody shots so um, I think that's the thing that speaks to me the most is that you ultimately uh, really find a way clear and a life that um, you know you want to have and you've created a style that allows you to have that and it, it's a really, you know, a beautiful to watch you create dynamic shots um, that don't hinder you as a creator or your lifestyle. That's absolutely it. <laughs> so as a reminder, um, you know, we're getting to a little point of closing out. So I thank you for joining us today, Audrey, and we'll remind everybody um, today the class is streaming for free for 24 hours. So I go up in the description and you should head over to the class page right now and watch how to create beautiful portraits by Simplify with Audrey. So Audrey, thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for this new class. We are so excited and we can't wait for the next one thank you so much i'm so excited i hope everybody enjoys it um i'm just a message away so anybody has questions you always can reach out but thank you so much kate thank you audrey thanks everyone and make sure you tap the link that's in the comments to go watch the class today
Pursuing creativity is arguably the most practical thing that you can do. We humans are adaptation champions. That's what makes us human, our ability to imagine. The hard part is to look inside and say, what are my invisible beliefs that I have about money? I wanted to figure out how it actually worked. And you are really here because you became passionate about an idea. What does it take to capture great photographs of birds? You have to be grounded in your cameras. You need to understand the technology. Just like any band shoot, we're looking to capture great shots of the band themselves playing on stage. So the drummer shot, lead singer, guitars. How do you even prepare to shoot with your phone? And then we're actually gonna go into the edit. Once you hit rock bottom, there's no place to go but up. You learn what, what's real. You learn what's needed. In astrophotography, there is a great deal more planning involved because you are literally shooting in the dark. We can't change others, but we can change our perspective. Wow, that's a good way to start the day. I had tears in my eyes. If you're feeling isolated and looking for creative connection, Try tuning in to creativelive.com slash TV. That's where we've got a 24 seven live stream from the kitchen counters. I can do that back lit shot that I really like to do. From the studios and living rooms of many of the world's top creators where we're doing musical performances, Q and A's, cooking shows, virtual book tour events, drawing, spoken word poetry, and more. Life passed me by waiting for an invitation when the world is greater than my nation or my occupation. Be someone you've never been. You feel all that adrenaline, it's medicine. It actually helps me feel like my days are more purposeful. I hope that out of this deep pain will come some collective growth. Dive into Creative Live TV today.